Patrick J. Adams, uh, first things first, let's talk about the season finale of Suits that we all saw a couple of months ago now, I think. Um, so at the end of season two, um, you, Mike had to, you know, to, to allow Rachel into his life, he had to kind of tell her a deep, dark secret about his um, professional life. Um, and that would have been a really big thing for him. What was your reaction to the to the finale of season two? I was really excited about it. Uh, both both Megan and look any any time on the show, uh, a we get to deal with with what Mike's dealing with and the fact that he's keeping this sort of really substantial secret. Uh, it makes me happy as an actor because I think that is sort of the gold mine for for him. That is obviously the the big thing that creates the most conflict and gives me the most to play. Um, that being said, I also realized that the show couldn't depend just on that conflict alone. So, you know, it's I was happy to have it not be the sort of inciting incident of the entire program and the only thing that sort of uh, that, that sort of creates this conflict. But one every time we get to go back to it, um, I'm, I'm really really happy about that. And, uh, and and getting to do that finally with Megan's character opens up this whole new world of interactions and possibilities between uh, between Rachel and Mike, which I think you know both she and I were um, were ready for the next step of whatever that was going to be, and I also think the audience was ready for that. I was getting a lot of uh, a lot of being yelled at on the street about when was I finally going <laughs> to figure out my 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 stuff with with Rachel. So so we were we were both really happy, and when we both got to that final scene, we spent a lot of time tweaking it to make sure we got it right, and, and we were both really happy with it at the end. And, you know, he had a really eventful year last season as well. Um, you know, he dredges up the trauma of his parents' death by hit and run, you know, acting on the hit and run case. He, um, right. His beloved grandmother dies. So what was your favorite moment from season two in terms of, as, as an actor, and just in terms of um, Mike's journey? Yeah, that's a really tough thing to, to nail down, um, especially because we move so fast through it. But the few, the, the few that stick out... Uh, what, for me, the grandmother episode and that sort of the episode sort of because she she passed at the end of one episode, which I really enjoyed that episode, and then getting to deal with the aftermath um, it was something new for Mike, and I and I felt like it gave me something really new to dig into and, and stretch stretch my legs a little bit on the show, and then uh, also getting stoned with Harvey, which was on that was just in that same episode, which I think is the genius of our show that these sort of things can coexist at the same time that you can have this like sort of epic silly stone sequence um, and not just us being stoned but us like really figuring out a problem together in the process of being stoned together uh, that was so much fun to play and, and, and it stretched in a completely different direction than they then the sequence of dealing with my grandmother and, and being at her funeral and, and having to sort of say goodbye to her. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that it was the juggling of those two things and at the same time that, that really tuned me into why I, I love being on this show so much and what I think is so great about it. Yeah, I, you just uh, hit the nail on the head. That is my favorite episode of season two. I love that dynamic between being you know so upset about the death and also we talk about High Noon, I think is what it's called, and the getting stoned with Harvey was so great. And that brings me to... What I think is the, the key of the show, and that's the chemistry between you and Gabriel. Um, it's just, you can't really buy that kind of chemistry. It either happens or it doesn't, and it happened with you guys immediately from the, from the pilot. Um, tell us about working with him. You know, it, it's this amazing sort of evolving thing that, you know, neither of us ever really think about it. And then obviously a lot of times uh, journalists and in interviews, they want to talk about it and they kind of want to know what it is and how we do it. And the more we get asked, the more we think about it and the less sort of answers we can come up with. Uh, as you know, I know it's gone public now that Michelle fairly uh, is on our show. and We had a scene with her the other day and she, she had this moment that she just said, this is Suits. And it, it was something that I never would have noticed, but it was like we were shooting a scene, it was me and Gabriel and her, and it was, you know, us all getting very mad, and it sort of suits high strung. We're all sort of dealing with a major situation. And Gabriel at one point, you know, while he's shooting, goes to fix his, like, his, his little, um, what do you even call it? The pocket square. He's going to like fix it, and he starts shuffling around with it because he couldn't remember his line in that moment. And so he starts, he starts fiddling with his pocket square. And I look at him in the middle of it. And I go, "Yeah, that's the problem." And then everybody laughs, and then we continue on with the scene. And she made the point. She's like, "That's what's genius about your show is that there are so few places, especially in television, where 
actors take themselves really seriously and they take their process very seriously and they don't like to sort of be made fun of and with Gabriel and I that just doesn't exist and you know we take what we do seriously and it's very important to us but within that structure is the ability to make fun of each other and to call each other out and to keep the attitude on set light and fun and exciting and uh, encourage people to sort of speak their mind and it's kind of like a big brother vibe it's like you you have to be able to make fun of each other and, and create this sort of sense of play on set and, uh, and I think that's the secret, not only to Gabriel and I's chemistry, even though that is, is sort of heart of the show, but it really is the key to everybody's chemistry in the cast, um, that nobody, nobody gets away with taking themselves too seriously at any point. Yeah, I'll, I'll, obviously it really comes through on the screen, because it looks like you're all having a very good time. Um, yeah. Now, I, I've got to raise this. One of our senior um, team members here at Gold Derby, Ken Yonan, is a diehard fan of your show. And he asked me to put this to you. He has a theory that, and, and, and this is probably not news to you, but this is his theory, that Mike is, um, is okay. always constantly struggling to um, win the affection um, of both love, Rachel, and father figure, Harvey. And he wants Rachel, mm -hmm. but he also, want, he also aspires to be like Harvey. And so we've got that, those two forces pulling at him. And he wants to know if you think Mike can have both. It's a really good question, actually. Um, you know, yes, I think uh, I think the sort of pulse of the show, the heartbeat of the show, the thing that keeps people there, you know, it's a sexy environment. There's people who are great at their jobs, very high powered. I think the reason that people keep coming back is because they do have this character to hold their hand through the process. They get this character who you who they're they're sort of rooting for to sort of figure out if he even belongs here. Or what, kind of warrior he's going to be, what kind of person he's going to be, what kind of relationship he's going to be in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in that, you know, people can have everything that they want, but I do think it's an interesting point he brings up that, that, that it might not look exactly the same. Do I think that he can be Harvey Specter and have a relationship with, with Rachel or anybody else for that matter? No, because I think what makes Harvey Harvey is that he's sort of renounced all of that from his life. Um, in, in order, he sacrificed all of that so that he can be this winner and so that nothing can ever get in the way of that. We've seen that that doesn't always work out so well for him. Uh, but do I think that he can be a successful lawyer? Do I think that he can find his version of what Harvey Specter might be that does include a relationship? I think absolutely. I think the thing, I think that Mike really draws strength from his personal relationships because he's lacked them for so long in his life that especially, and you'll see more of it this season moving forward with Rachel, that uh, there's a real empowerment that comes when he has somebody in his corner, has somebody who he can talk to. And for, you know, Harvey was never really that guy. Harvey was empowering in one way and that he gave him confidence and skill and sort of forced him to grow up a little bit. But the one thing Harvey never did was allowed him to talk about his feelings or, you know, deal with who he was as a person. And now he has that person in his corner. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that you're going to see Mike really come into his own in a way that doesn't just look like Harvey, um, but uh, will be something sort of very particular to himself and to, and to who he is. Um, what do you relate to with Mike on a personal level? Like, what interests you mo most about this guy? At first, it was the struggle of like a kid who just who just didn't have his act together, and who finally had this amazing opportunity to to go out and prove that he could do something that that he thought that you know that he believed somewhere deep down he could do, but he had really sort of screwed it up along the way. And and at first, that was really kind of my personal situation where I was with acting and what what I was doing. I I knew that I was good at what I did and that I cared about it, but, you know, it's a difficult business and I just didn't know if I had what it took. You know, as the show progresses, that changes and every year I sort of come at it from a different angle and, and, and you know, now it's his drive that really fascinates me and it inspires me sometimes, you know, I'll have moments where, you know, the, the exhaustion of what we do or just sort of all of the elements that, that come along with this um, sometimes can be very overwhelming. And I look at this character who, no matter what, is showing up every day at this office, you know, knowing that he is in a tenuous circumstance, that he's, you know, the stakes couldn't be higher for him, that his situation there could actually destroy all of the people's sort of lives that are there should they get caught in this lie. Uh, but he keeps pushing forward because he knows that he's good at what he does and that he cares about it. And, uh, and that's, that's, a, that's an inspiration to me. So I think now heading into the third season, like that, that's the thing that I'm sort of trying to hold on to and learn from, from playing Mike and, uh, and hopefully it'll rub off on me.
Mm, absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I, I think his drive and his his beginnings are really inspiring for a lot of people in professional life generally. Um, and that's what a lot of people tend to tell me yeah. that they love about the show. The other also, thing people, uh, also his sense of humor. Sorry I'll to totally interrupt. But also, he's you know the fact I love that there's a character who again that that goes with the theme of the show, but he has a, that he has a sense of humor about about. <laughs> every situation that things can be dire and they can be hard and at the same time you know tragedy is comedy and you can laugh at it and you can you know stand back from something and and and, and not take it so seriously i think all of these characters live in that really kind of beautiful world that tv seems to be heading into where you have these these you know for lack of a better word these dramedies where you know really talented writers can combine um you know, elements of life that are that are laughter and their horror sometimes, and and, mm -hmm. and and there's no direct line that you can that you can see between the two. It's a lot of gray area, and I think Mike does a great job of existing in that world. Oh, totally. Suits is hilarious, actually. Um, it's one of the funniest shows on TV, and it's not even you know classified as a comedy per se, but it's yeah. um it is so yeah. funny. Um, well, the highlight of the show for me is what we touched on before we started, which is the office politics. I love that part of the show. Um, uh, and so a lot of, of my colleagues in, in, the, in our daily lives, we always mention how we just had a suits moment. Um, you know, a lot of other people tell me they have suits moments in their offices. Right. Um, and I was wondering whether you know whether Aaron Korsh, the um, showrunner of the show, modelled the firm on any real life setting or where do you think he got that inspiration? I mean, he gets the inspiration from his daily life. I mean, Aaron Korsh is, he is suits. I mean, he's just this guy. He's the guy who thinks so deeply about things, so profoundly about things. I mean, you can have a conversation with him about the inner workings of a small three-sentence interaction between three people and in a work environment, and he could play it out and say that this is because of his relationship with his father and his mother, and it all relates to something, and he sees it almost like in a savant-type way. But then he can also instantly make fun of it and come with up with three ways to, to make a joke out of it. And uh, he creates that environment around him. When you go into the writer's room even, you know, they're, they'll be hard at work and they'll be in that room and they'll be sort of grinding away, trying to, trying to come up with, with what they're going to do. And then they'll be playing video games, you know, and they'll all sit down and play some old NBA jam in the office. And, and that's, he, he has to create that environment around him. And I have a feeling, even though I haven't known Aaron for that long, he's probably created that, that around him as long as he's been around. He worked in Wall Street, as he's talked about many times. And uh, I, I think that it was such a serious environment for him that, it, that that's kind of what drove him out of it. I don't want to speak for him, and I'm sure he has a much more um, detailed reason for why he ended up leaving, but I imagine that the sort of seriousness of that of that environment and the sense and the feeling that there was no real sense of humor in that um, might have been kind of frustrating for a guy who has such a sort of profound sense of humor. Mm, absolutely. All right, we'll go, I've got a couple more questions for you, then we'll let you go today. Um, now, the first thing I'd like to know is what can we look forward to um, in season three? It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Everyone's very excited about it. Um, I know you can't tell us everything, but what can you give us a little glimpse about? Well, at the end of uh, the second season, you had um, these sort of the what what I think Gabriel has referred to as the British invasion, uh, and so we've had this 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 sort of merger that's just gone through with uh, with with Darby, um, and so we've got a lot of these British folks coming over and stirring up trouble, um, which has been amazing, and I think it's great for the show. First of all, we've just got incredible actors. Um, and uh, and so they're upping our game, making us take ourselves a little bit more seriously. Uh, and uh, Rachel and Mike obviously are taking things to a different level, not without its complications, but I think that fans of the show who have sort of been waiting to get over this whole love triangle and will they, won't they of it all, will we'll finally have some, we're having some real scenes where you get to see them opening up to each other in a way they haven't yet. Um, and that changes, I think, for me, Mike's whole sort of personality this season is somebody who's a lot more confident, a lot more in charge of what he is and what he's doing. Uh, he, uh, obviously, Mike and Harvey are really at odds, and you're going to see a lot of that at the beginning of the season, them trying to overcome um, this huge gap between them because Mike has sort of broken this this, this trust with Harvey, and if anybody 
knows Harvey, that's the last thing that you can do. So him trying to win it back, I think, was a lot of interesting stuff for me to play. Um, you know, and, and, and between Jessica and Mike, I mean, Jessica and Harvey, there's, uh, because there's a lot of leftover residual resentment over what mm -hmm. happened with that merger. And uh, it's going to create a lot of conflict between two characters who have always been in each other's corner. Um, and Mike having been someone who's sort of had to choose sides once before, especially towards the end of second season, uh, he's going to have a lot of decisions. He's, he's going to have to make a decision about whose team he's on, and that's hard for a guy who is sort of skating on thin ice as it is in the, uh, in the firm. So there's, you know, it's the same thing. We're just ratcheting up a lot of that sort of inner office conflict. Uh, people are having to choose sides. Uh, you know, Donna... Donna is falling in love a little bit with somebody. Lewis is just being Lewis and taking a mud bath at some point. So there's all sorts of fun stuff going on where we're, we're continuing the comedy and but always making sure that we're 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 evening it out with uh, you know enough conflict to to keep people interested, enough drama to make sure that people care about what these people are doing. Sounds great. We're looking forward to it. Now, what else can we see you in um in the next few months? Do you have you worked in any other projects in your off time? No, this last the season two so took it out of me that I ended up doing a lot of traveling, uh, a lot of working my own stuff in the in the downtime. So Suits is going to be it for the for the Patrick Adams fill. Um, but I'm really excited for uh, for for the next break. I feel like there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff coming along. So um, I'm, I'm definitely planning on doing a lot more work out this year. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Patrick, for your time today. We um, wish you all the best for season three. Um, we are loving the show, and, um, and just keep it going. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time. I love talking to you guys.